Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here back with yet another 100% achievement and trophy guide and this time we're getting it all in the really cool Dangan Ramston Camshaft Ball Blast Onper. No, no wait, you're arrested for the murders of Mo Sislak and a poo Dangan Rampin? Eh, just Mo, just Mo. Uh, but no, seriously for once, this is Dangan Romper Trigger Happy, an adventure visual novel type game developed and published by Spike Chunsoft and is usually available for £13.49 or $14.99 but it's free with Xbox Game Pass right now so get it, get it good. So we play as Makoto Naegi, a bright student who gets sent to an even brighter school with 14 other bright students except it's run by a half nice, mostly evil teddy bear who traps them all inside with a game of murder each other for my amusement. It's a fantastic story and one I think you'll all enjoy. As for achievements, nothing's missable, you can replay points from chapter select but we basically have to fill out everyone's report card by hanging out with them, you, we can do this in school mode later on, take no damage in one class trial, i.e. a courtroom setting, collect 999 mono coins at once, which is the currency in game, buy all the presents, which is 114 of them, damn, and finish all chapters. It is fun, but the only one you may need to replay is for getting no damage, but it's easiest done in this video on chapter 1, but more on that a little bit later. Uh, so we are just going to begin. Um, in terms of logic difficulty, I would keep it on. I'd keep it on kind, which is sort of just normal difficulty. Um, you can put it on gentle if you wish, but I highly advise it. Doesn't make too much of a difference. It's the time um, that we get in the sort of courtroom setting a little bit later on. Uh, on gentle or kind, of course, you're going to get a lot more time. So it's more or less best to stick with that. Um, you can mash the A button if you want, or you can just either press the B button a couple of times and that skips the dialogue a lot quicker or you can hold down the B button and that will just skip all through the dialogue until we get to the next point of what we need. Now this is a long game so I'm going to be doing these videos in a chapter by chapter type setting. You're going to need about 25 to 30 hours again if you are mashing the button, uh, the dialogue with the B button and that is what we'll need to complete this. So here we go then with that being said let us begin. So we're going up to a lovely new school. Now, as I said, it is a visual novel. No, it's not one of those that you are going to press the B button and then you're going to get a thousand game score straight away, sadly enough. Um, <laughs> but here is the main character, Makoto Nayegi. Man with... I mean, that's just every uh, Japanese drawn haircut, isn't it? <laughs> well, actually, not really, because there's a lot of different and very cute ones in this game. But again, it's probably best to be um, just spamming everything with the B button. There's a lot... Of, Obviously, it's a visual novel, so a lot of the times you're just going to be, unless you're really interested in what they have to say, this is why on uh, True Achievements, it says that the game can take up to 50 to 60 hours, and that is, I believe, if you're just going to read all through the dialogue. But again, this is just an achievement guide, so we're just going to smash it, smash, smash as we do. Junko! Um, so, yeah, so obviously it's up to you however you want to play the game. I'm going to be playing the game by basically spamming the B button quite a lot so the dialogue just nips through. Um, but there is quite a lot to do in a visual novel, which I, never, which I bet you never thought would be a thing. But yes, there is quite a lot to do, so when we get there, I will come back to it. But of course, there's no point in me trying to read the dialogue or talk over it because, uh, you know, there's nothing to do unless something funny happens. And since this is a very murdery thing... A lot of funny stuff's going to happen. <laughs> so, I've got jokes coming up the wazoo for this. Slightly. But welcome to Am's Prologue then. So, the art style in this game is pretty much incredible. Um, in terms of checkpoints, the game uh, is, is very generous, but you can manually save whenever you want as well. So it's pretty cool with that one. Um, now, if you want to know, the white text is when Mayoko, Mayoko is speaking. The blue text is when he is thinking. And of course, there's going to be a little bit more later on in terms of we got a bit of yellow dialogue, a bit of purple as well, but we'll just get to that when we get this. So... My, my Koto, my Koto, sorry, I keep forgetting his name. So it's gonna, obviously this is just a tutorial. So move with the left stick, move the camera here with the right stick. And obviously it's pressing the A button to investigate and interact with stuff. So the first thing we're going to examine then is the note on the desk directly in front of us. 
So you can have a little look around. I mean, there's not really much, but, but it's pretty cool how everything's quite interactive. It's, uh, again, it's not just one of those easy ones. Um, this does take a while, and it's, uh, but it is a very interesting one. So, we've examined the note on the desk. Now we're going to interact with, if you turn the camera to the uh, left, you're going to see these metal plated windows. So just interact with the one on the right side wall and the one on the left side wall. Also, uh, one quick thing I should note out, I'll be doing it a little bit more as we go. If you are wondering, if you are just playing the game by yourself and you're wondering um, what, as we just go ahead and uh, interact, go, yeah, so interact with the other metal plated window, there it is. Uh, but if you press the Y button, it actually tells you what you can and cannot interact with. It's only on screen for a second, but it comes up with like big purple circles. So that is very handy, handy, handy. So, interact with the clock, which is just above the chalkboard. And um, my Koto is going to be like, damn. And that's all i got to say on the matter. Now, you can do optional ones as well, but I'm only going to be telling you the optional ones now. I won't bother with the rest of them because it just adds unnecessary time, which you don't really need. So, this, these two optional ones are the camera hanging from the ceiling to the left. And that, that is an OnlyFans camera, by the way. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I don't know what an OnlyFans camera looked like. And then the monitor on the wall kind of looks like the old, uh, kind of like an old speaker or something there on the top right corner. So that is that. Now what we can do is press the B button here to back out. And now we can start moving around. Um, the easiest thing I would do is press the Y button. You can uh, hold on the B button to run, but press the Y button to open up the map. And obviously I will, it, it just makes it easier just to find out sort of where we're going and what we are doing. So what we need to do then is go to the... See the three tower looking things at the very bottom? That is where we are heading. So you were obviously the little blue arrow. The main hall, or which is basically the school's entrance, is right at the very bottom of the map. So again, just press the Y button here. Make sure that you got your map up. And then we'll just turn around. And there we go. So yeah, I, I don't know why it can get slightly confusing. But with the map obviously on screen, it just makes things a hell of a lot easier. So we can just press the A button. Here is the school entrance then. It's by this part of the school, apparently. Uh, so that is where we go in. There are basically five or six floors and you'll unlock each one as we go into each new chapter. Whoa, hey. Oh, hey, another new kid. So here are the 14 gifted students. Damn! Dude Chicky on the right. I say Dude Chicky because I'm. I think later on he says that she says that she's a girl, which um, mm -hmm. it's very um, it's arousingly scary. It's scarousing as it was. Right. So uh, again, we're going to be speaking a lot, and we're going to be speaking a, a lot for the next couple of minutes. So basically, what we're going to be doing is just speaking to all fourteen of these people. Uh, it'll come up five at a time. So here's the next five. You can do it in absolutely any order. So you just press the A button to interact with one of the students. And then press either the A or the majority will be the B button just to skip through all their dialogue. There'll be nothing else. It's, they're literally just going to be telling you um, what they are the best at. So we've got the ultimate fanfare cre creator, which realistically you can tell from a goddamn mile off. But uh, <laughs> I won't say anything else. So just speak to all 14 of these people for now. Again, it's going to take just a couple of minutes. Love the dude's erection haircut though, that was hilarious. Yo, the name's Hey, listen, you know, yeah, <laughs> you know what, how cool is that? Hold on! Uh, um... You... Um... Sorry. No! 
not that you'll remember. I'm Toko. Toko Fukawa. What's your problem? What the heck? I'm telling. Anyway. I'm Kiyotaka Ishimaru. I believe in... You hear me? Got it! Heya! I'm Aoi Asahina. <laughs> you got it! Yeah! Huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Hello, nice to meet you. I'm Chihiro Fujisaki. My name is Kyoko Kirigi. What? Ugh. Hi, I'm Junko Enoshima. Chan. What can we do? Totally! <laughs> Name's Mondo Awada. Nice to fucking meet ya. Yo! Sakura Ogami. Hey. I see. Hmm. Name's Byaku Yatoga. Come on. I'm Yasuhiro Hagakure. Hero for short. <laughs> I do not think we have been introduced. I am Celestia Ludenberg. Ha <laughs> ha.
Hmm. Um. Uh, um. I mean, seriously? Piece of shit! Are you for real? Um. What does this mean? What the heck? Is it? Hey, you know? Like, what the hell? You know what I mean. Ahem, ahem, testing. Uh, to all, please make your way to the gym. Could it be? <laughs> you know? Huh. Uh. Huh? <laughs> anyway. Uh, um, this is... So, quite an interesting set of characters there, eh? Um, which you wouldn't expect anything less from, like I love Japanese art style games and stuff like that, because the, some of them just get, ah, oh, the, the, the art style, like I said, and just some of the characters are just unbelievably, unbelievably over the top a lot of the times, um, but hilariously, <laughs> just really awesome as well. So this is the observation that I was talking about, pressing the Y button, brings up a couple of circles on screen, otherwise we can press the B button now to, uh, back out. So, what we need to do now is go to the gym. So, the gym is obviously in the top left-hand corner, so just keep going straight. We're going to turn right, and we need to go through this room. And you can obviously see where it says it's a gym. Sadly for us, this is a murder gym and not a Pokemon gym. Would have made life a lot easier, but uh, hey. There we go, it's what we're in with all uh, sweet corn, or corn row haircut right there. Oh, corn dog. Yeah, very interesting set of characters. I like it. I like it. Anyway, this is where we're going to meet the game's villain, the angry Monokuma. Oh, <laughs> oh sorry. Hifumi, a big virgin, you. Um, actually, probably got a bigger dong than me, to be fair. Uh, now, you can speak to these people if you want, Junko and whatever, but we're not going to bother, of course. You know what? It's... It, it, it's all very interesting, but this is an achievement guide, so we just want to get through the game pretty much as quickly as possible, slamming at all the, um, all the things, mans, you know, as mans. So anyway, we're in the gym. This is where the, the weird, but you kind of got to laugh at him, Monokuma makes an appearance. Apparently, he's not a teddy bear, by the way. He's a high-tech robot, and he's the headmaster, so um, good-looking robot, bruh. Good-looking. And ah. Nice to meet you all. See what? Hey. See what? Shit. it. Well, hmm. come on. Now then. Good. You hear me? What's your there. Hmm. Too bad. Hmm. Yep. Uh, hold up. Hmm. It's true. Uh huh. Here. Hey, come on. What are you gonna do? Most What's this? Hey! Uh Actually... Now then! What? <laughs> yes, in 
indeed. <laughs> Hell? Huh? What are you saying? Saying what? I'm right, right? Dude, shit. You're fucking dead. What's the matter? You son of a- Gotcha, you little piece of shit! I don't know if you're a toy or a stuffed- Whoa! The violence against the- Shut the fuck up! Hey, damn it! Piece of shit! Watch out! Huh? Damn you! Of course! This is... Yep! <laughs> well... Ta-da! Hmm. <laughs> what? You guys... Shing! Yes, indeed! Calm down. Indeed. That's... What? <laughs> Ridiculous! Hm. So, in other words... So, that's intradasting, isn't it? So, all 15 of us have to survive, but you know that's not going to happen. In a game that's roughly about 25 to 30 hours, if you skip the dialogue, it's not a happy-go-lucky day where everyone just survives. There's going to be a lot of crap going on, but this is the end of the prologue. Now, if you were just wondering what was happening, uh, so basically, and there obviously was an explosion, Monokuma basically has just a couple of rules. If you try to use violence against him, he will basically end up killing you. There's not a lot you can do right, um, because there's a lot you can do wrong, and you'll end up dying for it anyway. So, happy day. So, Mondo grabbed Monokuma. Uh, explosion. Nope. Nope. He thought he was destroyed, but of course you can't destroy an evil butthole. So, we've got the school crest present. We cannot give the key items, the main key items, away. Just to let you know about that one. Uh, so, we get obviously our first achievement for completing the prologue. You can save the data if you so wish. Um, but he, he gives he's given us a e handbook as well, which is uh, very nice considering you know we're all gonna die basically. So we are just picking up then, obviously right where the epilogue just left off as we begin chapter one. Now all the students are a bit you know like what in the actual hell's going on? I just want to do powerlifting and comic book reading and yeah. Um, but. We are going to basically have to now look in the e-handbook and have a look at the seven rules. We've got to look at the seven rules to go, uh, to uh, abide to. Otherwise, we are going to get stuff stuck up a button down our heads and all sorts of crap. So, students may only reside with, uh, only with, students may reside only with the school. You cannot leave the school, of course. Uh, night time is from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. Sleeping anywhere other than the dormitory, your dormitory. Um, will be seen as sleeping in class. Sleeping anyway. Uh, oh, sorry, I already said that one. Uh, you are free to explore sometimes. Uh, again, we'll come back to that a little bit later on. We get free days. You cannot choose any violence against Monokuma because, you know, you'll get exploded and stuff. Uh, if you kill someone else, you will graduate unless you are discovered. Or unless they are discovered, of course, this is a set ga uh, set ga set game. That's what I'm trying to say. And additional school regulations may be added as necessary. Uh, so that is these seven sort of rules. However, yo, 
piece of shit! That's true. Such ignorance. <laughs> Give me a break. Hmm. Okay. Let's do it. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, hold up. What? <laughs> uh, uh. Hmm. Just hold. What? what? Such. You're fucking dead. What? You want to throw down? So like I said, this is where it gets interesting then. So obviously as we progress through the game, a lot of murder and a lot of stuff's going to happen. And then it will be up to us to try and uh, if someone gets murdered, for instance, it's then up to us to decide who the hell that person is. But the other rule is, if we wrongly accuse someone, then we all get punished. And then that one basically gets, the, the murderer basically gets to leave. So um, yeah, he's thought about all this. He's got a lot bored, a lot bored. So, this is our basically, this is basically our bedroom. So we've got now access to the handbook, uh, which we can use by pressing the X button here. And obviously this is still, this is still quite, it's the first chapter of the game, but it is quite tutorial-ish as well. So what we're going to do then, uh, we're going to press the X button here, which I'm just going to show you a couple of things. Here's the map. When we get outside for a bit of free time, we can have a look at the map. The truth bullets are when we're going to be doing the investigation a little bit later on. Uh, presents, there's basically a machine that we can use uh, to buy presents from. Uh, report card, this is for the, uh, the report cards of all the students, so you can see what infos and what skills you've unlocked from them. Regulations, they're just regulations which I already talked about just now, the seven. And then if we go into system, this is where we can manually save, manually load and have a look at the transcript. Uh, basically the transcript is just all the dialogue that's gone on through the game and of course options etc etc So we press the X button go into system and that is where you can manually save it. Otherwise No, we can just move on. So let's examine the bed first again If you want to press the Y button I'll obviously tell you what to examine and what not to examine and what to examine and ignore the uh, Sticky sock just underneath the bed there that wasn't there when I got here I swear so examine the bed, then the lint roller <laughs> next to the bed. That's what it is. It's not a sticky sock. It's a lint roller. Um, <clears throat> surveillance camera, just on top of the bed. Excuse me. Man, Monocomo, or whatever his goddamn name is, is a goddamn perv. Uh, notepad, just on top of the drawer to the left of the bed. And then interact with the drawer itself. Which is, of course, just underneath the notepad. Yeah, Monocomo, you son of a goddamn... So if you felt like you wanted to get lucky with one of these uh, males or females, it ain't happening because Monocomo's gonna come and... I'll leave it there. So interact with the key then on the table. <laughs> um, and then interact with the trash can on the right. You will grab your first mo uh, mono coin. So like I said, it is the coin in the currency. You can buy presents if you want straight away. Um, with if you do find some, but we're not going to bother until quite a bit later on. I interact with the... Well, I thought I could uh, interact with the bin again, but it doesn't actually give you anything else. So, um, move the camera to the right, and you can see the paper just on the wall. It's a piece of paper, I don't know, I can't explain any more than that for you. So, interact with that then. Mono Kuma, Mono Boomer. So, basically, uh, in terms of bathrooms, the girls' bathrooms are locked at night, but the boys aren't. So... I mean, I suppose if the boys were feeling a bit, you know, poopy or something, uh, then they can. Fantastic. Right, interact with the wall monitor, which is just by the bathroom door, right in the middle of the two doors. There it is. The wall monitor. The bathroom door is the door on the left, of course, the white door. I mean, it's pretty obvious when you think about it, but I decided to go the other way almost. <laughs> so there is the bathroom door. And then, finally, we are going to interact with the room door. Now, also, one good thing about this game is, if you're in a location that do you do have things to investigate, you can't actually leave until you've checked all the important items. So you can't actually miss anything important to the story before leaving. So just keep that one in mind. So you can't actually miss anything, um, like I said, in, in terms of Storus Progressionus. Right, so, 
with the note on the paper, like I said, the water's turned off at night time. The girls' bathroom lock while the boys don't. Each room's lock has been designed to completely protect against tampering or lockpicking. And all the girls get a sewing kit and all the boys get a tool kit. Uh, so after we've done all that and we're all good, we can actually just leave out of the door anyway. And we are going to bump quite literally into Sayaka. And now, this is where the um, blue pills that we took before we came in really come into effect, apparently. I, I mean, our heart starts fluttering. It's one of those, you know, love stories that ends up being... You know, you know how it goes? Oh, the girl of my dreams, and then they somehow survive absolutely everything. And then, you know, they live happily ever after. That's exactly what this is like. And as I'm speaking, I'm shaking my head in a no direction right now. Of course, you can't see me, so I'm looking a bit of a tool, but that's also fine. Right, so, what we could do, we are going to go to the dining hall. Now, the dining hall is obviously with the uh, fork and spoon, sort of in the bottom left-hand corner. So, just go straight, go to the left, and it's obviously right there, fork and knife. Play forking knives. I've seen you, sp I'll see you play knife and spoony before. No, so this is the dining hall then, so, um, again, a lot of dialogue is going to happen, but this is the first time that we are going to see text in purple. Now, when we see text in purple, we can press the Y button, again, it'll give you the tutorial anyway, but it'll uh, tell you to press the Y button, and then you can react to what they've said, but they that only comes up with purple right in, uh, it, it'll be obvious anyway, here it is, look, so the purple word's right there, so it's in brackets as well, and if you keep pressing the B button, I don't think it actually goes forward anymore. So as soon as you see these purple words, we can press the Y button. Um, obviously use the D-pad when you want, because there, uh, there will be a couple of options sometimes. So press the Y button now, the reaction will appear, and then we can press the A button to ask about school life. Then we can just smash through with the B button as usual. Right, when this is done then, what we're going to do, we're going to speak to Sayaka again. Sayaka Mayaka. Oh, baby, when you talk like that. Me, 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 me. Um, but we're going to pursue, so press the Y button again, and then choose the continuing the self introduction thing. And then again, obviously, press the B button to just crack on as usual. Then we can speak to her one more time. And then we can press the Y button and choose wanted to ask you something. Now, I'm not sure if you can actually go. Past the purple buttons, uh, the purple, the purple reaction buttons. I'm not sure if you can. I just keep pressing the B button, and it always just stuck there. So that's why I say just, just easier to use the B button. Ah, yeah, it's that smile, that damn smile. Ooh, pumped up, eh? Ah, I bet it does, Makoto. Yeah, I bet it gets you pumped up, mate. Right. Examining the clock, which is of course right at the top, just to the left of Sayaka Mayaka. Oh baby, when you talk like that, you make a woman go mad. So be wise, and be something. So, as it turns out then, we went to grade school together, she wants to be our ultimate assistant, I bet she does, and then everyone starts to turn up. <laughs> Okay, let's all go around. Hold on a sec. What are you talking? Hmm. Ah. Hmm. Oh. Um. Huh? Yes, indeed. <laughs> And we're going to be doing another quite a bit of speaking to Sayaka and a lot of pursuing as well. So speak to Sayaka, Shakira, Shakira. And again, we're going to be doing a lot of pressing the Y button here and then choose Bayakuya. I'm really sorry if I butcher a lot of these names, by the way. My British is just as good as my Spanish. It's just terrible, really. It's just as good as my Japanese, actually. I don't speak it, barely. 
So again, press the Y button and then choose Attacker. Of course, when you've already chosen one reaction, as you can see, it went to a more darker purple, indicating that you have done that. So that one's all good. So basically, we find out that everyone has their own dawn room, nameplates on the doors, keychains on the rooms, etc, etc. And they're all soundproof as well. So if you wanted to do stuff, you know, if you wanted to poop loud, you can poop loud. And if you want to flick your own ball sack, you can do that too. So, uh, we can go past this bit, and then we are going to press the Y button here and choose Leon, Hero, Junko, and Chihiro. Um, who basically will tell you that they found no escapes. Uh, you know, big metal windows and stuff. Next up, so we can keep pressing the B button here, press the A button, and then the A button again. Ch stop, and then choose Hina, Sakura, and Mondo. Who basically couldn't call for help and are only able to be on the first floor currently. They didn't realize that you've got to get through the first chapter to unlock the second floor. Yeah, you silly gits, except for you, who looks like you could pummel my own nipples in with one fell swoop. Um, next, we're going to go through this again, and then this time we're going to pursue. So again, press the Y button, and then Celeste, Toko, and Hifumi. Old erection haircut. Um, they did nothing but sit in the gym, which I'm not particularly too surprised at, to be fair. Um, n no offense there to um, my old Viagra haircut broski brosk, who is many of us, uh, including me. <laughs> and then, uh, speaking of Sayaka, one more time, we're going to smash through all this, and then we are going to pursue Sayaka herself. So, should be coming up. Now, again, you can see I'm not, like, smashing, completely smashing through the dialogue. I'm just giving you a bit of a chance to keep up. So don't want to go too fast, so you keep having to pause the video to see what's going on. I'm just going, you know, fast enough, but slow enough so that you can keep up. So I hope that is all good. Yo! Wow. What the heck? But it would... It... However... But... Yo! <laughs> What's your problem? <laughs> oh, are you okay with this? <laughs> Stop it! Um. <laughs> Do you actually... Are you okay with this? <laughs> I what can we um. You understand? What can we do? Now, what if Kyoko just wanted a cheeky nap? You know, she pretty much knows she's going to die soon, so why the hell not? Why the hell not? Right, so after all that, then we are automatically back in our room. Now we're going to examine the bathroom door. And then what's going to happen is Monokuma's going to show up and says that it's stuck just because of the door frame. So um, the boys' bathroom, remember, does not lock. Only the girls do. He basically, uh, and what he's going to do then is show us a trick to open the door, which is very funny. Man, imagine that. Imagine, imagine you're taking the biggest crap of your life, or, you know, you're literally just like, oh, well, if the rooms are soundproof, I'll just, you know, flick, flick the flick the pee-pee a bit and see how that goes, and the Monokuma just shows up. Oh, man, you just wouldn't risk it, would you? I'd rather, <laughs> I'd rather, st I'd rather die than a high-tech teddy bear robot thing trying to watch me, you know, hook up car batteries to my nipples and stuff. That, of course, is something I've never done, so, uh, right. Anyway, we're getting off the subject a bit. Will you stop distracting me, you beautiful people? So, so what happens a lot then? This is Monokuma Theater. Now, basically, during these little tiny segments then, Monokuma is talking to, obviously, us, all the players in the game. Sometimes they give a hint, 
about what's actually happening, or he's just going to talk absolute crap, and all he's saying that time was, well, that was a great first day, wasn't it? And that's about it. So, there you go, morning announcement then, 7am, night time is over. You, I will send you. Good morning, everyone. It is now seven AM and night time. Get ready to greet an And now for the first time of the game then we can do a little bit of walking around. Walking around, and we're going to be start coming up to the free time soon, which is um, where we're going to upgrade our skills. If you hang around with people, you can upgrade skills, etc. A little bit more on that a little bit later. So, from here, turn directly around, and Sayaka's door is basically just to the left of yours. There it is. So, interact with Sayaka then. And then what we're going to do when we start speaking to old Sayaka Shakira... We're going to pursue the favor, so press the Y button again, of course, remember, and then press A on favor. And basically what she's going to ask is, she wants Matoko's help in finding a weapon for self-defense, which is, you know, not uncommon since everyone wants to kill everyone else, so it's going to get to that point. Although, you know, she could be double-twisting us, it's that never trust anyone with a cute smile and a cute face. You know, people like me. <laughs> I'm just joking, of course. I am one big round potato, um, as it were. <laughs> anyway, we can actually now do a bit of teleporting, which is will come in very handy later on instead of having to go down five flights of bloody stairs. I'd rather get stabbed than keep walking up and down five flights of stairs. So anyway, uh, we're going to press the X button there to go into the handbook menu. Go to the map. And then just select where you want to go. So you can press the right bumper. It's going to take you to Hope's Peak, the, the school's first floor, to the dormitory, and also to the gym as well. Um, but just note, you can only go to places which has the green exclamation point in them. So sometimes we will have to go to these places on foot. As we uh, keep pressing the left bumper, right bumper, we can see the gym's first floor. And with the green exclamation point on it, that is where we can go. So you can press the A button on there. Um, some students later on will be marked with the exclamation point as well, so you can go straight to them. And you can only teleport to locations you've already been to and that are not blocked off. So like I said, we will need to get there sometimes. So, um, right, what we can do then is in the trophy room here, examine this big trophy case with a lot of trophies in it. I don't know how many more clear I can be. Um, uh, then choose the replica sword. Once we have clicked on the trophy case, interact here with the replica sword. There it is. So after touching the sword, Makoto notices the gold paint finish comes right off and all over his hand. Just use your sticky sock under your bed to wipe that off, that'll be no problem. Boing! So, speaking to Sayaka here once again, and we are going to pursue the dream option. So we can we can speak to her again, and that is exactly what we're going to do. Sayaka, Shakira, my zono, my bono. Bono, my tires have gone off. Alright, Lewis Hamilton. So... Do the same then again. Remember, press the white button when the purple option comes up. And then we can pursue Dream. And there it is. I... <laughs> you see? Um... Oh no! But... Uh, um... But that's... You see? Uh, um... And so after this then, we will be chilling and going back the condiment, condom in, condiment, yeah, condiment. 
sorry. <laughs> so I just seen condiment for some reason. My once again my English slash Japanese non-existent got confused with how to actually say the word. Right. So we're back in our room. Um, we've got the replica sword there too somehow. Don't know how that's happening. But of course we know that's not going to be a good thing. But we will now be introduced to the ability of free time. So I'm just going to quickly explain it. So at certain points of our school life we'll have free time. It's obviously going to tell us when. Because uh, it'll come up on screen free time. So what we can do is spend time with our fellow classmates. Uh, in order to deepen our friendships. Which of course will fill out their report cards. And get us a whole bunch of achievements for doing so as well. Um, you can also get a better impression of Makoto by giving some of the students gifts that they would like or they'd love. Gifts, when you get some more mono coins, can be purchased in the school store at the Mono Mono Machine. Um, and again, if your friendship grows, new info is added. Also, you can earn skills that will help with the court cases a little bit later on as well. So, now remember that spending time with someone also makes the time pass a lot quicker as well. So every time we've got the ability to do free time, we are going to be spending time with um, certain people. Now, I'm only going to be spending time with people that will give us the better skills and upgrades and abilities and stuff like that for the rest of the game. Also, we can only hang out with one or two students until the next time free session. So it's not really a timer, but it just amounts to the time that we can spend with someone. So first off, we're going to go with the room, spend our time, first bit of time with Sayaka Mayaka. Um, so, yep, yeah, now we're going to say spend some time with Sayaka. And again, with the Mono Mono Machine and the presence of stuff, we'll come to that a little bit later on, so don't panic about that. I'm going to try and get as close as I can to 999. So just um, spend a bit of time. You don't actually have to do anything. We're just going to keep smashing through. Um, obviously, we can't give her a present because we don't have a present just yet. So uh, that's not going to happen. Um, I think even if you can get a present, if you want, don't bother wasting it here. We're not going to bother... Wasting presents and stuff until um, quite a bit later on. Uh, so basically, she's going to tell us how she admired us, ha has for quite some time. Are you going to be double crossing me though, you son of a monkey balls? Yeah, probably. Uh, but what will happen actually, there's going to be sometimes there's going to be a bunch of questions that the students will ask as well. You can't actually get it wrong. You can choose an option, and if they say it's the wrong one, they could just choose the next option. So for this, it's Crane, which is the right option. Um, not all students have it, so don't worry about that. But if um, you end up getting to another question and you get it wrong, don't worry, you literally don't get penalised. Yeah, peeny. Penalised for anything, so... But, but again, sometimes that'll just pop up. So don't panic about that. Um, now, after talking with Sayaka here, we're going to level up a friendship with her, and we're going to unlock the skill... Melodious voice, which we will be using. Uh, we will also be getting skill points as well Which we can then use just before a class trial the courtroom class trial case thing uh, Again, I will let you know. We'll come back to that in just a little touchy watchy McButty Right um, So we are just back in the room then Monokumu Monokuma, sorry, why do I keep getting that wrong? He's also just going to pop up his ugly rear head right here. then when we wake up we got some more free time by the way sorry there's a lot of explanation you wouldn't think there's a lot to explain but there there is quite a few just in terms of when it comes to achievements and everything so again apologies i'm sort of over explaining stuff but you got it you got it so we're gonna head out and then what we're gonna do we're actually going to interact with leon first now i'm not totally sure if the uh, these people are in random locations or if they are in the locations all the time but for me leon was basically straight ahead from our room um 
right next to the dining hall and we're going to speak to Leon Kuwata. Now, the reason we are speaking to Leon is, when we spend some time with him, we are going to earn the robot jock skill. And again, this will come in handy for this first class trial a little bit later on. So, uh, again, you can choose whoever you want to hang out with. That's literally absolutely fine. Um, and of course, we haven't got any presents to give, so don't worry about giving him a present. Now, like I said... We're obviously going to be hanging out with these people when school mode unlocks, when we unlock that after we complete the base game. So if you think, oh, I haven't unlocked the achievement for fulfilling the report card or hanging out with them enough, don't worry, school mode is basically for, like free time all the time, so you can just keep doing that. Which I think that takes about four to six hours to complete doing all them. Um, but anyway, when we spe uh, again, when we interact with and hang out with Leon, we do get the robot jock skill, which we can use a little bit later on. Uh, you can interact with Celeste and hang out with Celeste because basically her passive skill raise just uh, gives you the ability to earn more mono coins if you want. But again, I'd prefer just hanging out with Leon right there. Right, we've now got the ability and we can hang out with one more student if you want. So we're going to basically finish hanging out with Sayaka and that'll give us a couple of achievements as well. Skilling them softly and the psychic ability, the psychic achievement, sorry. So head out. And Sayaka should be directly in front of you this time. Now, if you tried interacting with her room the first time, uh, you would notice that nothing worked and she wasn't actually in. So, go ahead, spend some time with Sayaka for the momentos. Why or why do people get shy? Why don't they just go, look, I'm hot, you're hot, we're hot for each other, let's get hot! Don't be all like, hey, we're just friends! <laughs> you know, and all that stuff. But anyway, we should now get two achievements here, providing you've just uh, hung out with Sayaka twice, the skill and softly, and the psychic achievement as well. That's basically fulfilling uh, in every page of Sayaka's report card. So, after doing that, we just had a good time and we've got our heart filled with love from an apparently famous pop star. Um, well, I guess it's not time. Announcement. Man, he's got a voice you just want to kick as well, don't you? Third day, no deaths. Well, we're doing good so far. So when we awaken, what we're going to do is interact with the door. Basically, uh, Taka's come for a visit. Chicken Taka Masala. Sorry, sorry. I, I, I know. I, sh I shouldn't make jokes about people's names, but, you know. Chicken Taka Masala. Kiyo Taka. Chicken Taka. Ishimiro Masala. So speak to Chicken Taka once again. Ah, you know what I'm like. Um, <laughs> and then basically what he's going to say is every morning after the announcements, the students should meet in the dining hall for broken Faust together. Breakfast starting this morning, which, I mean, he's an angry dude with incredibly bushy eyebrows, so we're not going to say no, really, are we? We're not going to do that. Uh, so what we can do, we can either teleport or we're going to not be lazy and go straight to the dining hall, which is literally just outside. Um, 
Oh, fuck, no. In fact, yes, it is. It is. It's right there. So, for me, apparently, I'm being lazy. <laughs> so, I'm teleporting my way there. Or you can go up the door, turn left, and there it is. I decided to teleport there like a lazy git. Um, so, basically, we're going to speak to Taka. All the students are going to start talking. And then a purple dialogue option will come up uh, with the words, Certain Murderous Fiend. So, speak to Taka. And then when the purple dialogue, Certain Murderous Fiend, pops up, remember to press the Y button and then the A button on it. Certain Murderous Fiend. But more important. Serious? Hey! Are you okay with this? Huh? Do you understand? Stop it! <laughs> what the hell? What? Piece of shit! <laughs> huh. uh. What the heck? Hey, listen. It is when Chihiro is talking here. There it is. So, sweet and what you're find. <laughs> yep. And then, basically, what we're going to do is learn about Genocide Jack, a serial killer who writes bloodlust on the walls from the blood of his victims. Ugh. I do not like that. I mean, I wouldn't like it if I was one of his victims, to be honest. Otherwise, it's all good. Hey, hold on. Because, I mean... <laughs> What's this? Bastard! You guys... <laughs> what the hell? True. Hell yeah. Yo. Hell yeah. Hey, um. Yo. Uh so, with that, basically, Monokumo said that uh, the police aren't coming, nobody knows we're here, and we're basically fudged unless we kill each other. Job done. Right, we need to go to the AV room. Now, because we haven't been there before, of course, remember, we cannot teleport our way there. Um, but, of course, what we can do is just have a look and see exactly where it is. So, the obviously, it's not going to be in the dormitory first floor. So, don't even think to look here. But it is on the Hope Hope's Peak first floor. So, if we head to the right when we were on the first floor, it's basically there. There it was, the big room right in the sort of middle of the hallway, more or less. So, that is where we're going to be doing. And that is where we're going to be going. Yeah. Okay, come in. There's the AV room, damn it. Right, okay, so we've made it. So you can keep your map up if you want. I highly advise doing it. Just go straight. Um, and then we can just head up the old wooden piers. Uh, the old wooden stairs. And there we are on the right-hand side. So just go down. Head to the... I mean, what are you going to be doing? Just having a quick double check there. So, we are right there. So, the AV room is literally by the two classrooms there. Class 1A and 1B or whatever it is. So, it, it's the one with the sort of stereo. So, head right and then to the left here. This is where it is. Kind of looks like the boombox stereo type room, whatever it is. But this is the AV room. So, we're going to examine another two things in here. The cardboard box, which is directly in front of us. Slightly to the right on the screen. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of DVDs labelled with each student inside it. That's nice. we got our own home DVD. And then what we're going to do is use the control panel, which is right in front of us. Not the be not the big monitor right in front of us, but the control panel, um, which is directly in front of us with the two chairs by it. 
C. Again, that's why the observation thing always comes in handy by pressing the Y button, just in case you do get stuck. And so, yeah, this actually gets quite disturbing. <gasps> you getting picked to attend Hope's Peak Academy. Are you really watching this, Mac Makoto Naegi, accepted into Hope Speak Academy. Oh boy, this is bad. So everyone's had their own little slice of, um, you know, whoever they love has disappeared, etc, etc. So, out of here, when everyone sort of pops up like that, good popping up, and everyone looks like 2D characters, we're going to press the B button to leave the area. Um, we need to go to class 1A, which is behind us. So we go behind us, straight, head to the left, and it is the first door that we encounter here. So just head in there, and we're going to speak to Sayaka. Uh, once again, Makoto actually hilarious tries to take a swing at Monokuma, but because he's so slow and pretty useless, at, apart from having fantastic hair, um, he, uh, you know, Monokuma just laughs and then we leave and job done. We end up back in Makoto's room after this one. So this is where, I mean, if you're not already creeped out by it, this is where the creepy and intense stuff and other stuff starts to begin. So we're just going to interact with our door. And basically Sayaka is there and she's like, Oh no, I had Shakira in my head. My hips don't lie. Shakira, Shakira. 
going to prison for being a tax dodging douche. Or whatever the point of Shakira and anyway. Press the Y button here for something really weird. And she'll basically explain that somebody tried to open her bedroom door and once they left she came straight to Makoto for help. Quick plan that they're gonna come up with. We're gonna switch rooms for the night. Doesn't break the rules since they'll be sleeping in a door room. Uh, so basically we're gonna trade keys and Sayaka, Sayaka promises not to answer the door for anyone even if it is Makoto Maboto. Oh no, that's Makoto! Uh. <laughs> uh. Now, isn't this just everyone's dream, having been able to sleep in your crush's room? Now, I know what some of you would do. You would go straight for the toilet just to see if it's as clean as it is in the boys, because that is something I would do. You thought I was going to say panty raiding, but no. Um, we're going to interact with the bin anyway when we're in Sayaka's room, see if there's anything in there. It's just her DVD. Um, which obviously she was pissed off, but we're not going to take it. Interact with the bathroom door. Obviously it's locked, so we cannot see if it is as clean as it is in um, my room. Of course, girls are a lot neater. Although I've heard a lot of times say that girls are actually a lot stinkier than boys. I don't know. That's just all hearsay, isn't it? So interact with the drawer there on the left-hand side. Basically, the, it's just the sewing kit. Um, which basically, Monokumo basically said, if you're a girl, you can use the sewing needles to stab people, and... Um, but the boys, you can use a tool to bash someone's head in, so... I mean, th thanks for that, Monokumo, I appreciate it and all, but... Uh, now all he's doing is talking about the following the rules to live happily together, i.e. kill everyone. So, when morning arrives, we're automatically going to be sent to the dining hall after sleeping in Sayaka's room. And again, because it's your crush, you're going to probably sniff a pillow and be and do all weird stuff. Which nobody will know, apart from Monokuma, because he's seen you on camera, you big weirdo. Um, <laughs> right, anyway. So this is, again, where it begins to get tasty. So, all the students start filtering in, but there is going to be one noticeable absence. See if you can guess who. <laughs> Yo! Indeed. My bad. Yo! Hmm. Yo! <laughs> um, however... Wow! Here it comes! So Sayaka is missing. Now we're going to head straight back from Makoto's room. And we are going to just interact with the bathroom door. And, uh, well, here it goes. By the way, just to gloss over the fact that um, uh, old Sayaka actually got stabbed to death completely. And she's got purple blood for some reason. That's to make it less gory, I suppose. But there she is. Our crush is dead. So when I said earlier about this will be one of those typical games where they get through it together and they live happily ever after. Well, that got messed up in season one, didn't it? Chapter one. Um, but by the way, you know, d d girls, with your crushes, do you sniff the hair or do you just steal all their jackets and then you just have a big collection of jackets and then when you break up you end up burning them or just binning them? Which again then pisses the other guy off. Is, is that a thing? I'm not sure how women do it, to be honest, but... Sounds like they do it a lot better than men. You get a bunch of free jackets all the time and stuff. God damn. 
Right, so anyway, now this is, like I said, where it starts beginning. Makoto is heart broko. And, of course, we are going to uh, start doing the investigations and stuff now. Now, remember, so, so obviously, if you remember, Makoto, whatever the bear's name is, I keep forgetting. Remember, he said that if you murder someone, you can leave. Only if you get away with it, though. So, somebody's been murdered. So now we have to choose the bit, and this is where the twist comes into it again. We have to, cor when the class trial begins after the investigation and everything, we have to choose the correct person, otherwise everyone else basically gets executed. That's Monokuma's uh, motto. Mono motto, if you want to call it that. So this is where it begins, so we have to do a lot of investigating here and uh, put a lot of truth bullets in our truth bullet gun, sort of. And again, Truth Bullet Gun will make a lot more sense when we come to the class trials a bit later on. Uh, um... <laughs> Just hold on. Stop talking. Hmm. Huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> now then. Then perhaps... In other words... <laughs> During the trial, you'll have... And once everything comes to an end, if the answer you've... Only the one that disturbed your peace will be punished. The rest, however... Then the one who got away with murder will... Which, of course, means your school... As far as class trial rules... Yeah. What? Execution! <laughs> well done! Uh -huh. Hey! What the hell are you talking about? Huh? What the? What's this? Stop it! What? Shut the hell up! Hi! Stop it! Shing! Who are you? Violence against Headmaster Ma- No! Junko! Goddamn son of a bitch! Darn her hair is so pretty and everything as well, but uh <sighs> Well, I guess that uh, gets rid of one extra person, doesn't it? So we are one step closer to freedom. Silly Junko. Well now. <laughs> now you see just how serious I am. Why? I knew it. Say what? Yell it! Ta da! It's. <laughs> Correct. Another... What the heck? <laughs> of course. So now let us begin the investigation. Uh, so what... Uh, our e-handbook's got a few updated regulations if you want to know or if you care. 
Otherwise, what we're going to do is just in examine Junko's body straight away. And he's given, basically, Monokuma has just given us a Monokuma file. It basically gives us some information about the murder to help some students along, since, of course, we're not pros at investigations. Um, Monokuma knows what happened, since he watched it all on camera, which is funny enough. So after this bit, what we can do is speak to Kayoko, who is in the middle. There she is, Kayoko. Hey. And then go ahead and speak to Celeste. Uh, she's going to point out that the body was found in Makoto's room, which obviously automatically makes everyone suspicious of us. But this is where we are going to start the investigation after speaking to Celeste Hills. <laughs> what the crap? <laughs> huh? So then, what should we? Goodbye. Yo. Mm. So um. Anyway, this is. Chair. Right then, so we're going to head back to our room, we're going to leave the gym and we're also going to leave the trophy room as well and then we'll automatically get transported to our bedroom. Which is, uh, thank you very much for that game, much appreciated. Saves a couple of seconds here and there, doesn't it? So remember we've got a lot of examining to do here, well not a lot, but quite a few things. So first of all we're going to examine the replica sword, which is right in front of the bed. And of course, note that everything you examine and all the questions you ask gets added to your truth bullet, which we can use for the trial later on. Next, interact with the room key directly next to the sword of death. Next, interact with the lint roll, which is to the left now of the golden sword. Oh, and by the way, everyone in the room, just the, I, I, ignore the um, rock hard sock right there. That that was already there before I got here. Swear down. Uh, interact with the sheaf. It's by Mondo. Um, just to the right of Mondo. There's Mondo, basically in the middle of the screen. So that is the sheaf. Couple of scratch marks on there as well. Interesting. And then after the sheaf. What we're going to do is interact with these scratch marks which are on the wall by the bathroom. So fairly obvious where they are. So just interact with those scratch marks. Wait. Huh. Well. God damn, Sakura, I love your skirt, buddy. Buddy girl. Kind of looks like um, Macho Man Randy Savage in that one South Park episode where he becomes um, Heather Swanson uh, to interact with, uh, or to compete in the powerlifting competition. So, have a look at the draw anyway. <laughs> Yo, what? There it is, what? having a look at the desk draw. Sorry, just, just getting off a bit, 
getting ahead of, ahead of myself there. I'm going to smoke them. Uh, <laughs> so, you'll notice that the toolkit is untouched. And Mondo knows that none of the guys have opened their toolkits either. So we're going to speak to Mondo now. And then he thinks that some evidence could have already been destroyed in the trash room, potentially. And that is always handy. And then go ahead and speak to Kyoko by the bathroom. So when we speak to Kyoko, what we're going to do is press the Y button when the purple bit comes up. And then we're going to pursue the um, dialogue quote, Very unusual. Listen. I see. Hey. I see. Well? Right, now it's time to cry, cry, cry some more. Our crush is dead and we have to actually have to go inside the bathroom. So, well, I mean, you knew it was going to happen to one of you. That's why you don't, uh, don't fall in love. Because eventually they will get stabbed in a bathroom by somebody random. It's, of course, it's not us. Jesus Christ, we were there. So what we need to do, we need to examine the dead body. Um, and then what's going to happen is Makoto's just going to point out the stab wound and the broken wrist. Like the Monokuma file already has. If you haven't checked your Monokuma file, it basically says what she died of and what was the problem with her. And we also notice a bloody left index finger, but the rest of the hands are spotless, which is very weird. So, um, you know, again, all this gets added to your truth bullets. And I will be doing a lot of explaining, and we will be going for three achievements in the class trials in just a bit. So now, just to the right of um, Sayaka there is the bloody writing. Kind of hard to tell from this angle, but it is just to the right of her arm. Um, but we point out that it looks like the number 11037 in Turadusting. So let's press the B button here now to head back to Makoto's room. And we're going to speak to Kyoko once again. Now, uh, we're going to pursue bloody numbers. So press again, of course, the white button. And then choose the bloody numbers dialogue option. Uh, and that's all. We don't have to go back to the other one there. And then after this, then, what we can do, we're going to examine the broken doorknob on the bathroom. So again, 11037. If you're smart, you will have already figured out what 11037 means. I'm not smart and didn't get it until uh, very much later on. The bo uh, bathroom door frame, that also gets added. And the bathroom door shut, which now means that we can examine El Broco El Doorknobo. So, there it is. So, interact with the broken doorknob. That was pretty pointless of me there, observation, <laughs> observing. And then, of course, Makoto is going to tell uh, Kyoto about the stuck door and that the knob is broken, possibly unscrewed. Hmm. I see. Goodbye. So that's it for our bedroom for now. What we can do, we're going to head out into the main hall. Now, so yes, obviously leave the area. And then what we're going to do, you can do this in any order, by the way. All we need to do, as you can see, the name um, name plates have been switched. So you can either interact with Sayaka's first or Makoto's, doesn't matter which. But you need to interact with both doors anyway. So we just interacted there with Sayaka's door. We'll interact with... Sayaka's real door, which now has our nameplate on it, and that will get you um, the dormant nameplates, truth bullet. Um, truth bullet. Yeah. So now we can actually interact with and enter Sayaka's room. Um, this time, of course, there's going to be no weird sniffing of the pillows or, you know, checking to see if the girls' bathroom's cleaner than ours. Uh, we can interact with the trash can. And we are going to take Sayaka's Motive DVD. Which, of course, Sayaka didn't fancy, but we'll take a little look. Now, what we need to do here, we need to go to the trash room. So that's all we're doing here. Um, so let's just get out. We're, we're, t we're literally in a dead, dead woman's area now, so uh, let, let's get the hell out of there. Right, so the trash room is on this floor, so just turn around. 
turn around, sorry, turn around from there, go right past Fimu Erection Head, go to the left, and obviously the trash can room will be right here. It's got a picture of a bin on it, or a trash can, of course, because I am technically Mercure, with the worst American accent on the planet, might I add. So, only two things to interact with. Um, we're going to interact with the hatch just below us. You can interact with the metal gate as well. Um, but, or oh, the hatch, I don't think it makes a difference actually. Either way, Monokuma basically says, Oi, Mir, you ain't got the keys, so get the hell out! Because for some reason, Monokuma sounds like this! I don't know why! Right, so we can't do that. So we need to back out here, so back out of the area. Uh, turn around. We're going to return to the hallway, and we're going to speak to Hifumi, Erection Head, of course. There he is. He's always happy to see everyone by the looks of things. Nice uh, big um, cobra pie gut you've got there as well, pal. Fantastic. Right, so speak to Hifumi. Basically, he is the one who's got uh, the trash key. So we are going to be instantly teleported then to the trash room with him. And after he opens the gate, we can then inspect things. So that's it. Oh, is it? Mr. Naegi! Without a doubt! Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> and of course, there's only a few things that we are going to be inspecting. For one is the incinerator just in front of us. Um, I do interact with the buttons here, but there's actually no need to do that. Again, that's just an optional one that you don't need to give too much of a monkey's about. Ifumi also makes a pretty funny reference to Dragon Ball Z in just a moment. Uh, so just interact here with the incinerator, and Hifumi's just going to explain that the green button turns it on, and the yellow button turns it off. Yes, um, then we're going to interact with the white shirt sleeve and the broken glass. They are literally just the two items right in front of the incinerator. Right, so now then we're going to have to head to the gym now, and Hero is going to be there. Chihiro. Uh, nothing else to interact with here, so of course we're going to go into our maps, press the X button, go into your maps, go to the gym. There it is, eventually we got there. Now we can actually go into the gym itself, not the trophy room with a couple of fake trophies and a gold sword, which ended up killing the fanciest girl of my dreams. There's Yasuhiro, not Chihiro, sorry. I... I get confused with everything. So speak with Hero there, old, um, <laughs> old hippie head. And then what, basically what he's do, gonna do is just confirm that it was his crystal ball broken, but he forgotten in the laundry room. So what we need to do after this then, go into our maps, and we're going to teleport ourselves to the AV room. We've been there once, so now we can transport ourselves there. So again, X button, map, go to the AV room on Hope Peak's first floor. So 
So just go ahead and interact with the control panel right in front of us and the DVD is just going to show how her famous pop group was with her but now, well, basically they're all gone. That's pretty much, that's pretty much it. So once was happy and now not. Done lucky. Success, none of them will ever perform a for Sayaka. So here's the build. I mean, if you just wanted the most popular one, you didn't have to kill off everyone else, is my understanding. But hey, I'm not an evil high tech robot teddy bear type thing, am I? So, what do I know, huh? So we need to look for the answer after graduation. Hopefully we're going to get past graduation so we can have a look. So we're going to head to the map. We're going to go to the dining hall now, which of course will be on the dormitory first floor. There it is. And this is the last place we can go before the class trial begins. And I'm going to explain those three achievements, which will be the easiest place to get um, on the first chapter in just a bit. So first of all, we're going to speak to Ayo. Ayo Ashina. Ayo, Ayo. Yo, my name's Ashina, dog. <laughs> and then let's interact with the kitchen, which is just behind her, just underneath the monitor. That's the door that we need to go in from Ayo, Ashina, dog. Uh, so head in. And then what you're going to do is interact with the kitchen knives. So the set of kitchen knives. A nice kitchen for such a terrible prison, I suppose. But interact with the kitchen set, and obviously you're going to notice that one is missing. And then what we need to do then is just back out of here, and then speak to a Yoashina dog once more, and she's just going to give a statement that she was in the kitchen when the knife disappeared. Yeah, totally. That's right. Well... So, uh, I'm getting tired of waiting. What say we just get started, hmm? So, this is it then. We're going to be transported here to the courtroom setting. Now, one thing I should and I will mention. Now, what we need to do during, these cla during this class trial, as we go towards the big grid door, make sure to never use the right bumper button at all. For the concentration for the achievement make sure to never retry and make sure to never get damaged now i'll quickly explain everything basically um at, at the beginning of each um sections there's a couple of sections quite a few sections actually but basically if you do happen to take damage from something what you can do is just qu completely quit out of the game load yourself back in and it will start off from that section so you don't have to keep replaying the class trials I ended up messing up three times, so I actually done this three different times, which was a pain in the ass, but you do get the mono, uh, the mono coins, so you can actually just keep replaying the class trials, and you will actually get uh, more mono coins if you want to, but I ended up doing it three times, uh, because I kept bloody messing up, and I was screwing around, but that is one important thing then, as we begin, we can all start heading down, but that is the main important thing, if you take damage... Um, you can, I mean, don't worry if you don't get all three. What I would do is, I, what I highly advise, would, what I would highly advise to do is try and go for the no damage. And the only time that I ended up trying to get no damage was on the very final section, which is called the bullet time battle. Again, I'll explain more when we get there. But, um, so yeah, don't worry if you don't get all three. You can either just replay this trial, 
um, if you don't end up getting one of the achievements and then just make sure to do that. Again, that's what I ended up doing three different times because I messed up on all three different times. The first time I obviously retried, which avoided that achievement and I got damaged, which avoided that achievement as well. So remember not to use the right bumper button. If you want to try and go for all three, I will try my best to explain. But sometimes, as we can see, we can make a manual save here. But again, it doesn't matter if you mess up. If you, if you go in for the specific damage one, then you can just retry without, um, without messing up. So go to your set skills. You will see Robot Jock. So press... So press the A button on the robot jock, and if you keep going down, you're going to see Melodious Voice. Press the A button on both of those until there's a gun icon next to it. Apologies, I didn't show you there. Um, but they are the skill points which um, will help you in this case. So make sure to put those in first before we begin. Um, so there are a couple of games that we are going to be playing, and it's going to take around half hour, or roughly about 25 minutes to do this. So first up then is going to be what's called a non-stop debate. So basically, a lot of these characters are going to be talking. We need to press the left stick to aim and then the Y button to fire. Okay, you make sure to remember that. It is the Y button to fire. Um, if you end up missing one of these, I'll obviously tell you the answers, but if you end up missing the statements, don't panic. The sequence is going to repeat until you get it, whether you run out of influence or time runs out. Obviously... Um, you'll have plenty of time if you're playing on one of the first, the easy or normal difficulty, uh, so that's fine. Um, now, your reticle's not going to be steady, just be aware of that. The right bumper button is to activate your focus gauge, but do not do that if you want the achievement, so don't worry about that. Your influence gauge is called, is basically your health, and it is the heart in the top right-hand corner. So, again, this is one where you're going to have to try and get these done, you know, pretty much first time if you're trying to go for the no damage achievement. The Y button, like I said, is used to shoot the statements. And that is why we use the robot jock skill, because there's no delay there. So let us begin and let us do this. So the first thing, what's going to happen is that the answer that you need to shoot is going to be in big yellow. So when Chihiro's speaking and the target to shoot will be didn't even have a chance to resist. Okay, so Chihiro, here she is. Make sure you've got your steady, your reticle ready. Now, press the Y button here. She didn't have a chance to resist. Then, um, Makomo, whatever our bloody name is, is going to say why it's wrong. And then go from there. But that is basically how we do that then. So, um, again, if you do miss... I'm not sure if you take a little bit of damage if the, if the um, sequence goes wrong again. Um, but just keep you, you can just keep going until the option comes back up. So don't worry about that. Right, same thing again, we, Mondo is going to be speaking, and the answer we're looking for is some random knife, okay? So keep your reticle nice and steady, as soon as you see Mondo talking in the bottom right hand corner there, now, press the white button now, some random knife. So that is the correct answer for that one. Again, I think a lot of these games, it's probably worth just having a look at how it plays. And then my explanation might make a lot more sense, because I got confused. That's why it took me three times, because it took me three times, really, to understand what the hell was going on. So it may be worth having a look before, um, having a look at how it's played, and then listening to the explanation. But anyway, this next answer is when Toko is talking, and it is when she says, when no one was in the dining hall. So again, I'll tell you, obviously, when to press the button. So, when no one was in the dining hall. Now, when no one was in the dining hall. Shoot it! God damn it! Okay, so we're good. Now, there's going to be what's called a reasoning. You just have to simply press one answer. That's all it is. So simply press one answer after the after this bit of dialogue is done. Just to be perfect. Um, if... Ugh! Okay, so then... No, no way! I can. That's right! Me! Actually, I got so scared. But if it wasn't either of you... Why didn't you say so? Sayaka. And the answer you're looking for then is Sayaka. So make sure to choose Sayaka as the option there. Um, I don't... I think it's random for the names that come up on screen, but just make sure that it is Sayaka. Now we've got a new game coming up called Hangman's Gambit. Now what you have to do, um, so for the first one, the answer is here, but there are two letters that are missing. So it'll have the H and it'll have the I. 
So what we need to do is repeatedly shoot the A button. So basically, a, a, a couple of letters are going to be floating around the screen. So all what you need to do is just shoot the letters that you think go into the um, into the word. So like I said, we're going to need to be shooting the A and the R. Now you need to shoot them three times, three times each, until it shoots down. And again, this is one of those that I can explain as best I can, but it's probably worth just having a look and, and seeing how it goes yourself. Because, um, you, again, I learn more by doing rather than sort of listening or explaining. So, again, the letters are going to be floating above us. We need to make sure to choose, and as you can see in the bottom left-hand corner there, H and I. So, when you see the A, um, hit that three times and then the R button. So when R appears, hit that three times and that will complete the hangman's gambit. So it's very easy enough when you know what you're doing. But again, first of all, it kind of the explanation for me just uh, <clears throat> went down like a crap in a toilet hole, really. Right, now we can present some evidence for the first time. So again, this is just constantly going. It's constantly different ones. But we are going to present some evidence. So the first one is going to be the bathroom doorknob. So make sure it is the bathroom door knob, not the frame. Then press the Y button there uh, to present your key item. Evidence that the killer had trouble. See how the top part. Now, of course, if my explanations are not enough, you can actually choose the absolutely option to learn a bit more about non-stop debates if you prefer that. But if not, we can just crack on. Now, what we're going to do is wait for Leon to speak with the option locked in. Now, this is where it can get confusing, because Leon will say stuff in yellow, but, of course, it's not the right answer. So, remember, we are looking for the option. Uh, the, the correct answer is locked it. So, do not shoot here. This is where it can get confusing. Now, shoot. So, yeah, sometimes they will say stuff first, and you'll automatically think, Oh, crap, sh shoot the shit. No, but no, it's not. So, that, that's where it can get confusing. Next, we're going to be having a bit of reasoning, i.e. pick the correct answer. And the correct answer is, the crime took place in my room. So the, the crime took place in my room and not Sayaka's room. And then we're going to be presenting some evidencios. What the killer didn't know was that then there was so they had no ultimately we kept the killer definitely so the killer would have to <clears throat> I'm sorry but I majority oh you it's fine it's fine just ask your qu what mm. yes how did the killer maybe then negative fine no that oh <laughs> And then for the next evidence then, it is going to be switching rooms. So very important there. Press the Y button on switching rooms. And then we're going to be going for another bit of a truth bullet. Oh yeah. Obviously, as you've probably been well aware, you can continue to press the B button to smash through the dialogue if you so choose. Knowing what you've been through, I what a Kirby. Huh? Well, what the hell? Which means, only someone- Then either it was Makoto who lived there. Of course he didn't. Because the note also- She must have slid it under their door. Of course! I'm only into two- And honest. So, truth bullet, it is now time for dorm nameplates. There it is. So now, we need to wait till Celeste is speaking. And the room that Makoto was staying in is the answer. So the room that Makoto was staying in. And again, it'll try to throw you off there and it'll go to another character. That's fine. But remember, it is Celeste and the room. So now, that is the one. The room that Makoto was staying in. Job done. The nameplates on my... As a result. And the nameplate on Makoto's room had... So what you're saying is, the room... Then... If someone did do <laughs> Next up then, we're going to be choosing Sayaka again. Sayaka Shakira. So make sure to choose Sayaka, who, whatever the option is for you, make sure it is Sayaka. Me and Sayaka were the only ones who ever knew about us switching rooms. You can also infer... She specific... She wanted... What happened? But we still... That reminds... Oh yes, it seems pretty... How the hell... 
Alright then, for the evidence then, make sure to choose Sayaka's Wrist. So whatever the hell that is for you, make sure to choose Sayaka's Wrist and then press the Y button again, of course. Now this next Truth Bullet, basically, you're going to have a couple of different options. When they start talking, we're going to quickly press and hold the left bumper button. And then you can choose the option, Replica Sword Sheath. And then we're going to look for the um, answer, which is a sword base, a sword based sneak attack when Hero is talking. So it's going to give us three options. Now you can't actually change them. You can't change them here, but when it begins, so, so, come on. So now press and hold the left bumper. Go down to Replica Sword Sheath. Replica Sword at Sheath is what you need to do. And then when Hero says a sword based sneak attack now, shoot it with the Y button. So you have to do those two things to get that correct right there. Actually, no. See? There's a gash in it. Stop jumping ahead! In that situation. So you I think I get the culprit. So she then. Next up then, it's a long one, I know, but we're gonna choose her palms. Her palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy, there's vomit on the spaghetti already. But the vomit on the spaghetti? <laughs> so, there was her palms, and then we're gonna choose another reasoning. Yeah, so like I said, it's a long one, but this is the water was off, so make sure to choose the water was off. Again, never worry about time, you should have plenty of time anyway, but yeah, every time I thought it was coming to an end, we've still got another two games to play yet after this, so that's what it takes. Unless you're rushing through literally, it takes literally about 25 to 30 minutes just to do this bit. Next, we're going to choose Sayaka again. So Sayaka, Sayaka. Oh, maybe when you talk like me. I'm dead, now I can't speak. The person with the knife attacked first. And the one who like Sayaka? Now do you understand? And if it's true. Indeed. These are- Maybe the- Sayaka wanted to- uh, That would also explain why she, she wanted to get whoever she had targeted to come to Nakoto's room. What end by committing the murder there if the target knew she- So all that's why she's- But doesn't that- I don't know. I'm- I that must be when we read the tape. Hey! Hey! Wouldn't it be awful if I... If we can't uncover who murdered Sayaka. So once again, it is time for another truth bullet. And who we're looking for this time is Leon. And the answer we're looking for is there just aren't any more clues. And it's going to be when he speaks for the second time. So not now, but after this bit. Now shoot. Bam! No! Swamp! There still might be one. The dying mess. One, one, zero, three, seven. Rip. Rip. Next up, then, we're going to be choosing left index finger. So make sure to choose left index finger. I got it! Her left index finger had blood on it. I see. What the heck do those numbers mean? Hey, Chihiro. You're a. Of course. Huh? Don't these first two. Ah, oh, you're right. Whoa, you might have found me. <laughs> but even if that really is an N, N0. Oh my god. Huh? And now we get to choose a culprit. This isn't the end, by the way, so who we're obviously going to choose is Leon Kuwata. Leon, cute water. So he's only three from the left of you instead of going all the way to the right. But there we go. Choose Leon. It's pretty obvious now. If you got it earlier on, then congratulations. I will throw you my heart, my love, just for you. Uh, so that is Leon. But again, we've got quite a bit to do. Then we've got the closing argument and we've got a bullet time battle left to do as well. So... <sighs> that, that sounds like I'm the killer? You can't just go and say shit like that, huh? Now, the evidence for this one is going to be the burnt shirt piece. So, burnt shirt piece with a bit of purple blood on it. Or pink blood. Yeah, my colours are not that good. My eyes are a bit dyslexic with it, to be honest, in terms of colours. I'm colorexlic. Colorexlic, I'll call it. Um, next then, the reasoning. 
after this one is going to be the answer. Now, be careful with this one. It's very easy to get confused. But we're going to choose the answer, how it was disposed of. So, how it was disposed of. So, not where or when. Not where or when, but how it was disposed of. There it was. And we're going for the final truth battle. And then two more reasons before we get into the closing argument. Oh, God damn, it's a lot of arguing. Just say, Leon, you did it. Hucky, Mackie, whatever your goddamn name is, kill him. So next we're going to look at Leon, and then you'd have to get close to the incinerator is the answer. So it's not this one, it is not this one. So that goes to throw you off there, but the next time Leon speaks, it is the answer, this one. So you'd have to get close to the incinerator right there, job done. Hold on, I think I... But if you can... What is it, some kind of glass ball? Actually, it was supposed to be... Two more reasonings left. The first answer is going to be throw it. So throw it. I got it! The killer simply took aim at the one. And then, of course, finally, the last one is going to be the ultimate baseball star. So the ultimate baseball star. And now it's on to the closing argument. Hooray! I mean, it's still, it's very cool, all, all of these, um, you know, all of these things. Because the, uh, this next part is basically going to act like, it's a very cool feature in the series here. But we have to piece together the murder in a manga-style story. So, if you're unfamiliar, we're not going to use all this, so if, right, if you're unfamiliar with manga, manga comics read from right to left. So the beginning is all the way to the right side. What we're obviously going to do is work all the way to the end on the left. We can use the left stick to scroll through the manga pages, and then we need to use the left bumper and right bumper to scroll through the image options. So as you'll see, the image options are going to be at the bottom of the screen. We need to then use the correct image to put in the correct slot. And remember, we have to do it from right to left, which again is very cool. Uh, very cool thing. So, first of all, there's the images then. So first of all, we need to get the blackened, is what it's called, standing outside the door with Sayaka's nameplate on it. So you'll see the guy with Sayaka's nameplate on it on the very right-hand side of the image. Oh, there it is. So if you get it wrong, I do believe you will take some damage, so just make sure to get it right. But the first one there is the blackened, standing outside Sayaka's uh, door with Sayaka's nameplate on it. Next, so scroll to the left with the right stick and then choose the black end with the back to replica sword. So he's got the sword on his back. So use the right bumper, left bumper. So I was just having a check through just to make sure, but it is this one right here. So the one with the sword on his back. Um, scroll over ever so slightly to the left and what we need to do now is the blackened block in the knife with the replica sword sheath. So he's got the gold sword and he is blocking his attack. Next, to so scroll over a little bit, then choose the gold sword with Sayaka in the background. So this one right here. Again, don't panic about time. You can literally, we've got 20 minutes to get past this bit, so it is literally fine. Next, scroll over and then choose the screwdriver with the doorknob. So fairly obvious which one that is. Screwdriver with the doorknob. And then head over to the left once more. Yep, head over to the left a little bit more. Next, it's Sayaka's handwriting on the wall with blood. Again, they're going to be in random locations, these images. So they won't always be in the same locations, but that's what you should have looked for. Sayaka's handwriting with wall on the blood. Next is the lint roller. So sorry, I'm explaining things a little bit late. I do apologize about that, but there's the lint roller. Next, scroll over and choose the blackened holding the crystal ball. Crystal! So blackened holding the crystal ball. So for the ninth one, it's going to be the tied shirt being thrown into the incinerator. Don't get confused. It is this one with the shirt, all of the shirt being thrown into the incinerator. And then finally, it's the burned end of the shirt sleeve with the bits of blood on it. So there's that one. And then what he's going to do then is... Uh, just go through the whole story of basically what happened and then we're going to explain a little bit about the bullet time battle Which this is where I got very much confused and ended up getting damaged The last two times which is why I had to replay the first uh, Class trial uh, total of three times 
I will tell you exactly on the bullet time battle where you will get damaged um, when you know. Because obviously if you haven't noticed already, you should have five hearts in the top right hand corner. If you get damaged a little bit, a little bit of the heart on the very left hand side will be taken off. If that happens, completely quit out of the game, go back into it and you will just start the bullet time battle again. So that is my big, big advice right there. Otherwise, just get through this bit for a moment. So instead... And stab, Sire. But with what... And with that, all... With Sayaka dead, the ki First, they took... Then they took the... After they tried... But so they came up with a plan to use Hero's Crystal Ball. The kill... And the Crystal Ball... There was one part of the shirt they So the bullet time battle like I said if you get damaged quit out and completely come back into it But if you want to you can obviously have a look and choose absolutely to see um how it's actually played or you can just fast forward a minute and a half or something and see how it is actually played um so what will happen is it's kind of like a rhythmic a, a, a rhythm based mini game okay so you press the a button when the dots are in the center of the circle they'll obviously keep going uh, quite faster the more you press the a button now you and then you need to press the y button to shoot a phrase that has been targeted okay so again if I'm, it's kind of hard to explain it. Again, it's probably easier to have a look and then have a look at the explanation. But when phrases are targeted, you need to press the Y button when the dots are in the circle. So you still need to do that. Um, if the phrases explode, it'll damage your health and you'll obviously miss out on the achievement and you'll have to quit out and come back in. Um, so yeah, you do have to press the... So you press the A button to basically get the target to um, start shooting the phrases and then press the Y button on the dots when they're in the center of the circle to actually shoot them away, okay? Again, it's probably easier to have a look. Um, you will build the combo, the tempo, the combo, the tempo speed will increase. So you just need to adjust and try and keep the combo going. If you miss it, the combo will slow down. So again, it'll just be easier to have a look here uh, rather than me explain it. So press the A button when now, A, A, A. Now press the Y button as the phrases on screen start getting a bit bigger. And obviously as you can see, the combo keeps getting quicker and quicker. So anytime you see, and you'll hear it as well when it's targeted, a little target noise will appear, but you need still need to press the Y button on the dots in the center of the circle. So just keep pressing the A button, then press the Y button when you see one or two, or hear one or two come on screen. So now again, obviously press the white button in the center of the circle when the dots are going past. So keep going. And now what we need to do for the final strike, just simply press the Y button because it's the only answer. And that is that. So that is how you will get the no damage achievement. Again, that bullet time battle confused me a good couple of times. Honest to God, it confused me a good couple of times. But um, so yeah, definitely worth learning by just looking at what to do rather than me trying to explain it there um so if oh, you no um didn't retry a single time you will get the watson mistried achievement if you didn't use your concentration skill by pressing the right bumper at all you'll get the not from concentrate achievement and if you cleared the trial without taking any damage you'll get the you must acquit achievement so remember i've done this um, a total of three times, so I will have a little, a few, quite a few more mono coins than me. Um, obviously, you'll get graded on all your performances, but these are where the achievements will unlock. Now, obviously, the, I'm going to have show you three edits here, because 
I'll show you exactly where all the achievements should unlock. For you, obviously, if you manage to get all three, that's fantastic. And you can just crack on with the story at your leisure without having to worry too much. If you didn't manage to get any of the achievements, what I highly advise is just replaying the first class trial again. And the reason I say that is because it kind of acts as half a tutorial and it is definitely the easiest one to get those three on. Um, obviously the class trials later on in the game are a little bit longer and uh, they add more things into it which gets a little bit more confusing. So if you did end up missing one, the one achievement, I highly advise just spending, if you smash through the dialogue, press the B button and smash through the dialogue, you can get through it within 15 minutes. Um, so yeah, that's my high advice. Again, like I said, I had to do it three times because I got the achievements on three separate times, which is why you saw the edit <laughs> right there. Otherwise, we are pretty much at the end now. We are at the end of chapter one, finally. And, uh, yeah, this is a bit weird. Now what I've done is I've, I'm actually going to leave... In terms of cutscenes, there's not a lot of cutscenes to skip in the game. Um, but the one that I definitely do leave in, we don't have to press the start button to get through it. I'm actually just going to leave the execution in it. So we are going to be seeing Leon's execution now, which is going to be ironically fantastic in a way. Um, so yeah, we, we are, but we are at the end now, so yeah. Thanks for listening. No matter what happens... Yes, in Pun punishment. Wait a second. Yeah, that's it. Is that okay? Hmm. Do you understand? So, oh. Hey, um, hmm, hmm, thrills, chills, I'm begging you, hey, stop, now then, I, no, no, let's give it ever, no, Well, damn, bruh! He just got fudged up, man. That must have pinched a bit, like. But anyway, that's Leon's dead. And that is the first chapter complete. Just a, another minute or two of dialogue, and then we will automatically begin chapter two. Uh, so, there you go, then, guys and gals. So, that is part one, chapter prologue, and chapter one out of six uh, for 
uh, Danganronpa. Sorry, I almost forgot the name there. Uh, so I do hope that you've uh, enjoyed the game. I hope you've, uh, the, the guide for the first chapter helped anyway. Especially with the uh, potential over-explanation of things. Obviously, because we sort of know what we're doing a little bit more now, I'm not going to be explaining as much as we progress through the game, but there was a lot that was sort of going on. Uh, so in ter especially in terms of the class trial, I hope that I explained it well enough so that you got all three achievements and that were all good. Um, but there we go then, guys and gals. So thank you so, so much. Um, if you obviously uh, have enjoyed the guide so far, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend as well. Big shout out to everyone who continues to support the channel on Patreon. And I will see you in part two for chapter two. Big love. So... Certainly. Anyway... Right. Correct. <laughs> hey. What? <laughs> 